This joke or don't you? Right! Well, let me get on with it then. So this parrot, he keeps ruining all the magician's tricks. He shouts, it's in his jacket, it's in his pocket. Right? So right. one day... <laughs> uh, one day, the ship sinks, but the parrot and the magician, somehow, they both manage to get onto the same raft. And the magician's staring at the parrot, and the parrot is staring at the magician. And after a while, the parrot says, all right, I'll give up. What, what have you done, done with the ship? <laughs> oh, you heard it then. Yes. Mm. Oh, Mr. Cassidy, you're back then from the bank. That's right, Glasser. Been keeping busy, have we, while I've been away? Never stop, Mr. Cassidy. Until just now, presumably. Yeah, well, that's what you might call taking a well-earned breather before me next onslaught. Right. This way, Blossom. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Cassidy. What's going on? I don't know, but I've got this funny feeling I ain't gonna like it very much. This way, lad. Now, I don't know if you've ever seen anything like this before, but this is what is technically known in the trade as a sink. Oh, yeah. Its operation is simplicity itself. In fact, I'd even go as far as to say it was within your own limited capabilities. We turn the water on uh, here and here, and we add liquid, so. After that, all that's required is elbow grease. Yeah, but Mr. So I, uh, I presume by now you've had your well-deserved rest? Right, let's get on with it, shall we? Yeah, but hang on a minute, Mr. Cassidy. Are we forgetting something here? Like what? Well, when I agreed to join your little team here at Outer Space, nobody said nothing to me about washing up. But when I agreed to form that little team, Glossop, no one said anything to me about having you in it. So, learn to live with it. I had to. Yeah, yeah, but before I do, Mr. Cassidy, there's uh, something I ought to mention. Oh, see, yeah. it's this thing I have, you see, about cups and things. Oh. Well, you know how with Yuri Geller, whenever he gets hold of spoons, they start bending? Well, with me, it's cups and things. Whenever I get my hands on cups, especially dirty cups like them there, they, they just seem to start coming apart in my hands. In fact, my mum reckons that it's a sign, is that? I just wasn't destined to be one of the greatest washers up of life. That's all right, Glossop. As far as breakages are concerned, the usual arrangement will, of course, apply. What usual arrangement, Mr. Cassidy? Appropriate deductions for all breakages will be made from your wages at the end of the week. Hello, Dunmore Town Football Club. Who's speaking, please? My name is Rasputin Jones. You might just have heard of me, seeing as I've called you about 24 times already this week. I'd like to speak to your chairman, Mr. Wright, please. Wait for it. Mr. Wright doesn't seem to be in at the moment. Mr. Wright's that man again. Are you in? No. Right. Honestly, this job's enough to make a dishonest woman at you. Sorry, Mr. Wright doesn't seem to be in at the moment. Yeah, I know, darling. I just heard him tell you. So? Well, so obviously he's avoiding me, isn't he? Why would he want to do that? Well, if I knew that, I'd know what the hell was going on, wouldn't I? OK, so what happens now? What happens now is, mate, is that if the mountain won't come to Mohammed, Mohammed's gonna have to go to the Flaming Mountain. Not that Ronnie Wright's much of a mountain, mind you, more of a molehill that is gonna get well and truly flattened. Just a minute, where, where exactly does that leave me, then? How do you mean? Well, in case you haven't noticed, Mr. Chairman, someone has driven a bulldozer through what used to be my office. Now, I don't exactly know what you want me to do, whether you want me to work from home or what, if you like. On the other hand, make yourself at home. Use Derek Cassidy's desk, he won't mind, even if he does. Just too bad, isn't it? See you later. Right. 
How long have you been working here then? Just a few weeks. Since I finished school. Of course, it's not really permanent though. Just for a few months. Sort of works experiencing, you know. Mm. Do you like mm. it? Not much. It's been on the dole though. Yeah. Mind you, I did think I was coming here as assistant secretary, not a security guard. Charlotte, hello. Hi. Are you waiting to see me? Well, I've brought back some of my granddad's things. Oh, that's very nice of you, love. Thank you. Uh, come in a minute. Right, well, sit yourself down, love. Ah, oh, yes, that's nice. <laughs> Tell me, um, how is your grandmother? Terrible shock for her, him dying so suddenly like that. Well, you know Grandma's right. She does a crown in private. Oh, yes, yeah, she's quite a woman, your grandmother. And he was quite a man. We'll miss him, you know. That is what I like to see. What? Mm -hmm. A man who has found his true vocation in life. Ho, ho, Mac. You'll excuse me if I don't start rolling about on this floor laughing, won't you? Do I detect that you are not entirely happy at your work? Me? No, I'm having a time of my life, Mac. Really? Yeah, in fact, sometimes I'm laughing here so much, Molly comes running to see if I've finally gone bonkers. Don't you, Molly? Oh, yes. Yeah, but uh, what about all the money you're making? The money I'm making? You're joking. With what I've broken, I reckon by the end of this week, I'm going to owe Rasputin something. Hi, Mac. Ah. <laughs> What's this? Another one of those delegations of yours. Well, we just wouldn't know what's happening, Mac. Too united. Mm. Yeah. What makes you think that I would know? Well, if you don't, who does? Oh, please, Mac, just tell us what's going on, that's all. Mm. What, so you lot can blab it all over the town, you mean? Ah, oh, oh, come on, Mac. I mean, this isn't anyone you're talking to. It is a Dunmore United Junior Supporters Club. Yeah. Yeah. And that is supposed to reassure me, is it? Because let me tell you, sir, oh, it does. Come doesn't... on, Mac. If we don't find out something soon, we're all going to go. All right, to bed. okay, all right, all right. But I am warning you, if one word. If what I'm going to tell you gets out, OK? Come on. Right. Here, hold your horses, Mac. Where are you going? Well, to my office, of course. Where else? Yeah, I know to your office, but when you do, what am I going to do? Well, I suggest you make a start on the washing up. Oh, and uh, use rubber gloves. Saves you from getting washed in red hands. <laughs> What I mean is, how can a team get itself promoted one season and then find itself in dead financial trouble before the new season even starts? For that very reason. How do you mean? Because it is a fact of life in football that the higher you climb, the more it costs you to stay there. OK, at the end of the day, we may have a trophy on the sideboard, but we also have an overdraft at the bank. So what's new about that? Well, what's new about it this time is that the chairman just didn't feel that he could stick his hand in his pocket to bail us out. So what are you telling us, Matt? United have gone bust. It's not what I'm telling you, Boxer. What I'm telling you is that we are up to our eyeballs in debt, and that money had to be found from somewhere. And Rasputin found it by selling off our pitch to a supermarket, right? Wrong again. He found it by selling off his pitch to a supermarket. What, is he stupid or something? Selling off the pitch before he had another ground lined up? No, no, he had, a line. He had it lined up. Which grounds? Dunmore Town. Oh, come on, Mac. Dunmore Town they never sell their ground to us. Now, the idea was a merger between the two clubs. A merger with Town? You're joking! They keep their fans in cages during the week. It's a well-known fact, is that? Oh, I see. And you and the rest of the United fans are just a bunch of choir boys, are you? Well, as a matter of fact, a merger between the two clubs makes all sorts of sense from everybody's point of view. Not just for us, but for half the clubs in the league. Now, by putting them both together, we should, with any luck, double the gates and half the running costs, and then end up with plenty of money in the kitty to offer the fans one of the strongest squads in the division. Right. We're all right then, Mac, no problem. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, it's not quite as simple as that. Why not? There's a hitch. How do you mean, a hitch? Well, there seems to be a bit of a hiccup at the town end of things. You mean the deal might not go through after all? There is that possibility, yes. But the ground's already been sold. Yeah, and flattened. Right. Don't you think I didn't know that? So what's going to happen then? I'll be honest with you, Jenny. I have not got a clue what's going to happen.
All right then, lads? Yeah. You live around here, do you? Yeah, that's right. Tough sort of area. Sort of area, if you'd have parked your Rolls Royce, you could just end up having your upcaps, Nick. We wouldn't know. We haven't got a Rolls Royce. Of course you haven't. So I tell you what, keep an eye on mine for the next ten minutes, will you? What's in it for if we do? Or a case of what might be in it for you if anything should happen to it while I've been away. What do you mean? What I mean, my son, is that I have a nasty, suspicious nature and a photographic memory for faces. So if I come back and anything has happened to it, I know at least two bright boys I can describe to the police, don't I? Know what I mean? Of course you know what that is, don't you? Yeah, Ross Butin Jones, chairman of United. Or rather, ex-chairman, eh? Now, when you say he's not in, do you mean he's not into everybody or he's just not into me all of a sudden? I mean, he's not here. At that door, at this very moment, by any chance, would he? Look, I've told you he is not here. Well, I tell you what, let's just find out, shall we? No, hang on a minute. Hello in there, Ronnie. Are you receiving me? Over. Look, there's nobody in there. Of course not. That was the ghost of Christmas past I just heard snap the lock on. Right then. A message for your beloved chairman when he comes back in, or should I say out from underneath the boardroom table, tell him to be in touch, and no, soon, no. because the longer this rubbish goes on, the worse my temper's gonna get. And when I'm in a really bad temper, I'm not very nice to know. In fact, I have been known to get quite frighteningly violent. All right. Be sure. Sure, no, we Well, 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 not a mark on it. Very wise, my sons. Love to grandmother. Bye. Bye, love. Mr. Wright, I'm paid to work as a secretary, not as a guard dog. Yes, well, you know what they say. No point in having a secretary and barking yourself. Who says? I do. Now, before you say another word, how about some coffee, eh? My nerves are in tatters with this little... Your lot. nerves? What about mine? My nerves are older than yours. <laughs> The night the offer was really weird. Perhaps Rasputin was after a job on the town board. Seeing United's gone bust on it. Well, if it was, he was wasting his time. Ronnie Wright wouldn't even talk to him. Where are we going anyway? Into town. Into town where? Well, uh, this new place I found. In fact, we've got a bit of business, actually, on behalf of Dunmore Town Football Club. Have my lads. What business? You'll see. So, one minute. Hello. Well, oh, Caroline, hello. Boxer? Yeah, it was here about five minutes ago. Why? Boxer! Boxer! Have a word with you for a minute. All right. So, uh, just don't let it quit with your coffee, all right? Come on. Mm -hmm. 
Your dad's just been on the phone from Kuwait. Caroline took the uh, call at home. Just wants a word with you uh, privately, personally. He's got to ring you back at 7 o'clock tonight, our time, OK? Nothing wrong, is there? I shouldn't think so, why? Why? Right, thanks, mate. Yeah, mate. What did you mean when you said you had a bit of business here? Recruiting business, Charlie. What are you talking about? Look, all the signs are that you're not going to go right? So? So? It's what you might call a glorious opportunity, isn't it? To recruit a few fans for town. You've got a slate loose. He'll never get United fans to support town. Well, who else are they going to support? There's no United anymore. Probably go out of town, follow one of the big clubs. They'll soon get sick of that with the cost of train fares. Well, you certainly won't get him to support town. Well, you don't know until you try it here, Charlie. Show the post to Mudsley. Mm -hmm. Trying to stick that thing up in here, are Why not? Free country, innit? You know very well why not. Because if that lot kept sight of this thing, then three minutes it'd be World War Three in here. Just trying to cheer them up a bit, Charlie. You know, make them realise that there's still a football team in this town. You're not trying to cheer them up. You're just trying to stir it up. If you think I'm going to sit here and watch you do it, you've got another thing coming. Not chicken, are you, Charlie? No, not chicken, Mugsy. Eh? Just not stupid like you. Look, if they're in here, they're here to cause trouble. You don't know that, do you? Of course. Molly! Yeah, well, I'm telling you, if they're looking for trouble, they can have it, mate. Do you know what, Alex? Sometimes you even frighten me. <laughs> Put it away, George. Why should I? Because I said so. So? Who are you all of a sudden, then, eh? Maggie Thatcher? <laughs> all right, because I'm asking you to. Look, John, if you don't put that thing away and there's a punch-up in here, I'll never speak to you again. I mean it. All right, Mugsy. Put it away. Just cos she says so. No, because I say so. Hello again. Hi. How are you? I'm all right. Hmm? What are you doing around this neck of the woods, then? Slumming. What else? Oh, yeah. Oh, well. Enjoy yourselves. Yeah, we'll try. See ya. Yeah. Guess so. What the hell's your game? It's one I've just invented. It's called Find the Ronnie. Do you reckon it'll catch on? How dare you just break into my car like this? Careless of you to leave it unlocked. It wasn't unlocked. I locked it myself. <laughs> That's what they all say after their car's been nicked. I'll have the police on you. Ronnie, love, if I don't get some answers out of you, it's not the police you're gonna need. It's a flaming ambulance. You don't frighten me, Chance. Really? Now then, Ronnie, where were we about a week ago before you suddenly did your world-famous impression of the Invisible Man? Just a minute. Oh, yes, I remember. With shaken hands on the merger and told the solicitors to get on with the necessary paperwork, yes, well, I'd sold my finance. ground to the supermarket. So, you were saying? Oh, I'm very sorry, but, um, the deal's off. Off? Hmm. Mate, at this very moment, there's a great big hole in the ground where my football club used to be. Yes, well, I'm, uh, I'm very sorry about that, but, uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Will you know? Of course. You know, when our man was a kid, he used to reckon that being good at billiards was a sign of a misspent youth. Right now, I reckon it's these things. I think you're probably right. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Is he looking for bother? Who? Your boyfriend. He says he's my boyfriend. Are you saying he isn't? Oh, he's just a good mate, that's all. Mm. Why? What do you think? Well, is he looking for bother? I don't think so, no. Fancy game with doubles in? Well, wouldn't he like it, your, your good mate over there? Why not? Mac. Is that 
back safely from Australia? I am afraid so, yes, Derek. Good. Good. Is there uh, something... What do you mean? Oh, I just wondered if there was something I could help you with, seeing that Mr. Jones seems to be out. I hasn't told you, then. Told me. Yes, that uh, for a while I'll be using this office myself. Oh, I see. Hmm. Yes. Yes, well, that uh, makes sense, doesn't it, to the circumstances? You'll be looking for a desk, I suppose. No, no, this one will do just fine, Derek. That's my desk, actually, mate. Well, you know, I'd like to do anything I could to help out, of course, but uh, it does have to be said that that desk is in fairly constant use. I see. So you don't think it's a very bright idea, you and I sharing it for a while? Oh, no, put no finer point upon it? No, Mac, I don't, really. OK, well, you tell him or shall I? Tell who? The chairman. You see, it was his idea, it wasn't mine, actually, Derek. Ah, oh, yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> don't, don't get me wrong, Mac, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, uh, uh, w w when I say that I don't like the idea, uh, well, I mean, of course, it doesn't mean that, that, that I don't understand the basic underlying common sense of it, you know, in the, in the circumstances, for the general good of the company, <laughs> and if it's what Mr. Jones really wants. Beat him, did you? Or was it that what mattered? What do you mean? What do you think I mean? Look, Don, let's get something straight, shall we? You're a good mate, and I like you. But then again, I like a lot of people. But that doesn't make me their property. All right. I'm not your girl more than I am anybody else's. And if you want us to carry on being good mates, you better understand that. Mm. That's another game of doubles, then? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Lover's tiff, then. You try to be funny, Mugsy. Who? Me? Could have still got it on you, then? What? You know what? That poster you wrote out. Oh. I thought we decided not to bother. I mean, uh, looking around this place, I do feel a bit like a general custom must have felt. Gimme. You sure? I said, let me have it. Right. Three coats, please. Three coats? Yeah. At 